This is our second video in the Panaceae series. Today we're going to compare the eastern hemlock and the balsam fir and share with you some of their edible, medicinal, and utilitarian qualities. After a while, your brain patterns on the bark and texture of a hemlock versus a white pine. Yeah, the bark is still furrowed, not as deeply, and the rising pieces are much thinner and longer than in the white pine, and it's far less crumbly. The big way to find hemlocks is to look for the darkest greens in the forest, and they're usually in a place where their feet are getting wet. So those subtle little valleys that dip down and funnel the underground water, you're going to see marked with pine, or excuse me, you're going to see marked with hemlock. Uh, this is one of the uh, most valuable trees in the forest for us uh, because we're a little south of common spruce stands. So those are unavailable. Those are the prized rootlets for cordage. Second best are the hemlocks, and we have lots of them here. Again, they're also a great way to locate water. I would not build a shelter in a hemlock stand, but with regards to shelter, the dead hanging boughs make excellent rakes. They're resilient and springy. Good tree to know, the little tiny cones. Um, they're too insignificant for us to gather from, but hemlock is an important habitat indicator for red squirrels, porcupine, and fisher. So you could use hemlock if you're going to uh, hunt easy meat or trap easy meat in the case of the red squirrel. Uh, people often confuse hemlock for balsam fir. I'm going to show you an easy way to tell the difference because while they're both in the Panaceae, they have vastly different personalities. The bark on the young balsam fir is thin and smooth and is pale gray. What makes it distinctive is the blisters that are filled with a resin often referred to as Canada balsam. On older trees the bark gets rougher and the blisters disappear. The aromatic needle leaves are about one inch long, dark green and shiny above, with two rows of white stomata below. Unlike the hemlock, the balsam fir grows with opposite branching patterns. The very tips of the branches, unless damaged, look like the center of a peace sign. Balsam fir stores most of its nutrients in these blisters, but we can access them as an easy source of flammable liquid, epoxy resin, additive to water for a strong medicinal tea, and even a raw food source. In the spring, the new growth, the bright green tips of both the balsam fir and the hemlock can be eaten. Hemlocks have a stubbier needle, it's darker on the top and lighter on the bottom uh, relative to balsam fir, but more notably the branching pattern at the tips of the branches are irregular or alternate. In both cases, just like most of the Panaceae, hemlocks and balsam fir grow in a world branching pattern from the center of their trunk. Uh, Got a bunch of balsam fir and hemlock. Uh, Skinnier the better I try to go for, and the snappier the better. If it snaps, it's usually dry. So I just went around. Got some more here. A whole bunch, we'll see how it lights. We use the high dry tips of dead standing balsam fir saplings for our spindles and fireboards for bow drill fire off the landscape in a winter environment. For winter shelters, balsam fir is one of the most numerous trees available. We often peel the bark on a vertical axis to produce shingles or thin out thick stands of young saplings for poles to use in our winter lodges or as reflectors for our fire pit. Like all of the Panaceae, the needle leaves of the balsam fir can be steeped into a tasty vitamin C rich tea. Surprise, quit daydreaming.